Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, today I want us to consider how skilled uh, people were historically with their swords. Uh, when we look at Lichtenau, he tells us that he's teaching us uh, a secret art. You know, he's giving us information that is not commonly known so that we will have uh, an advantage in, in the sword fight. Um, so the, you know, that implies that most people did not know this information. So um, I have no way of going back in history and observing what the average swordsman was like. So what I want to do is I want to look at people today that carry firearms um, and, and, and um, you know, basically compare how skilled they are, okay? Uh, now, the reason why I'm able to do this is because I am a full-time firearms instructor. You know, I'm also a, a range safety officer. Normally, when you see me guys doing my video, my videos, right, all you see is the uh, lapel over here, right, in my short training videos. You don't see the, the rest of the gun range over here, right? So, um, usually all my short training is done at different gun ranges. Um, what I'm usually, you know, usually people are coming to me for gun training, um, and then I'm able to sell them sword training on top of that. Okay, so that, that's where I get most of my, um, my, my, my sword training students from, okay? Um, so, um, the people that I have observed at, at different gun ranges, uh, and I've been doing this since 2008, um, in my state of Pennsylvania, uh, about 12% of the population has a carry permit. So they're able to carry guns every day. Okay, so, uh, so people carrying guns, uh, civilians carrying guns is common in my state. Now, most of the people that I have observed um, have a very minimal amount of training, right? Um, most of the people, when they go to a gun range, they're, the only thing that they really do is target practice, okay? They don't do gun fighting. Um, you know, and, and target practice is the equivalent of pal training. Um, you know, gun fighting is a whole different concept. Okay, so, uh, so just to be, you know, target practice, you're sitting here, right? You're out, boom, 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 boom. You're seeing how if you can hit the target. You know, gun fighting is a different type of thing. Um, let me turn on some earmuffs. So, um, with sword training, one of the things that we, that we learn is that when we attack, we're supposed to step offline, right? So if I got a a sword and a buckler, right, and I attack, I'm stepping off of line, right? Right. So the same thing applies with gun training. When I come out of the holster, right, I want to step off line. You know, simply by stepping off line gives you know can give me a slight advantage in a gunfight where somebody's fixed on my position. Maybe they've already got a, a, their gun drawn on me. Uh, the odds are basically ninety percent in their favor, ten percent in mine. Right, so you know, because they are ahead of me, right? So I can try and take initiative back by stepping offline. So this is something that normally most most commercial gun ranges will not even allow. So as I stand over here, I will practice stepping offline. So do a scan and assess, look for additional threats, then reholster the gun. Okay. Um, another thing that you know you'll typically see at gun ranges, they're only shooting in one direction. Okay, that that's not realistic uh realistic gun training is you know i'll shoot come out i'll do a scan assess i see another threat come out and i'll shoot right All right so that is now now we're actually practicing gun fighting as opposed to just you know target shooting okay um another thing like uh, i was mentioning earlier if um you know your your, your hand your two hands if you're gonna hold the gun one-handed because you're grappling or something um, they're always on a, on two different planes. So if somebody's striking me, right, and 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 and, and um, gunfighting at grappling range um, can be a very common thing because if somebody wants to threaten you or actually hurt you, they usually have to get pretty close to you. So if somebody's attacking me over here, you know, hands up here, guns low over here. I'm using my body to basically aim the gun. Okay, or if they're striking me low, right, let's say they might, you know, maybe they're where I have a gun over here, they're going for my gun, while one hand is low, the other one comes high. So the way that, the way that works is, I'll go up to the target there, so as I'm being struck here, I practice coming up, okay, or I practice one hand low, one hand high, right, um, Another typical type of gun training scenario is, uh, it, it, you know, I'm trying to create distance, okay? So, 
So again, I'm here. So that that is a you know another realistic gunfighting type of situation. Um, another real another realistic type of gunfighting situation is one where you actually fall down and you have to return fire from the ground. Okay, so. Okay, so again, um, realistic gunfighting uh, scenarios there. Another very common one is if we're in a, um, a close-in uh, 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 grappling type of situation and um, you know somebody's striking here, I pull my gun out. Normally, I'm trying to hold my gun back a little bit because I don't want my gun to touch their body because if the gun is pushed back a little bit just like that, right? If it hits somebody's body and it comes back just a little bit like that, it's not going to function. So one of the things that um, I train people and, and I practice is if the gun gets jammed, you have to do a quick tack, rap, tap and rack to get the gun operational again. So let's practice this. The way, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to jab the gun into my target, which is going to force a malfunction, which is then going to force me to have to clear the malfunction. Another realistic thing that I practice is after you do your scan of cells, get the gun back in the holster. Because if you're standing out in the open with a gun like this, you know, people might assume that you're the bad guy and they might shoot you. Uh, so again, this is realistic uh, gun fighting, not target shooting, gun fighting. Um, so uh, another important thing is that to understand with, with, with pistol shooting in particular is that um, when you're shooting, you know, normally if you're being threatened, your, the natural thing for you to do is to look at the, the thing that's scaring you, right? Look at the, at the threat. But in order to shoot the pistol well, what has to happen is you're observing the threat. As you come out, right, you have to shift your focus, your eye, from the threat to the front sight. All right? So that requires a lot of practice because the, your eyes are kind of like a camera. They can only focus on one thing at a time. You know, if you're focusing at the threat, you're not seeing your sights you can't hit the target. So despite the fact that there's something out there that's threatening you, you have to, you have to train uh, and you have to do this quite regularly because it's not a normal thing. It's not a normal thing for you to shift your focus from the thing that's scaring you back to your front sights so that you can hit it. That, that requires a lot of training. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why uh, I, you know, for home defense, I always recommend a rifle, AR-15. The nice thing about a rifle, Okay, is because you have your hands further apart, right? One hand here, one hand here. You know, simply by pointing my arm underneath the chest of the threat, okay, that's going to get my sights on target, right? So I got four parts of my uh, four parts of my body on the gun: two arms, my face, and my chest. So that's going to get me up faster, so I can do all those things: step offline, shoot, you know, turn around, shoot. You know, do a scan, assess, shoot from the ground. You know, that's realistic, uh, you know, gunfighting, you know, uh, as far as the training goes. Um, now, one of the things that I have done uh, as a firearms instructor is uh, I've, uh, you know, it's, you know I, I've, I've, because I've interacted with both military and police, the military guys, right, the standard infantry, usually have trained on rifles. They have not trained on pistols. Usually in the military, you, go, you don't get trained on pistols unless there's a specific reason for it you know unless you're in some type of you know special operations unit you're normally not going to get pistol training you just get rifle training likewise police officers are almost always just trained on pistol they're not trained on rifle so over the years what happened is a lot of the military guys uh that go to the ranges they basically i i train them in pistol shooting and uh the police guys I train them on rifle shooting. So, and, and, and there's a lot of um, exchange of information. So, uh, a lot of times I don't charge them anything because they have, because they're, they're coming to me from a background. So, if, if they have something to sell me as far as information, so a lot of, the, especially the special ops guys, 
over the years. I didn't, I didn't, um, you know, I, I didn't want to take any money from them. Um, I wanted to get information from them. Okay, so um, with the special ops, the special ops guys were interesting because they came out back in 2000, 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, you know, we had already been fighting the war in Iraq and Afghanistan for about, whatever, eight years. And they basically, they reduced the number of troops over there. So, they had a lot of people coming back, um, looking for jobs. A lot of them were trying to get into law enforcement. Because there were so many guys that came back, you know, th you know they couldn't possibly hire ev everybody. So, a lot of these guys, they wanted to put something on their resume that would make them stand out. So, um... You know, I am a civilian instructor, right? I'm I'm a certified, um, you know, I'm a certified civilian instructor. So, what they want to do is they wanted to put on their resume that they took uh, civilian uh, gun training courses, uh, which indicated that they knew basically the rules of engagement uh, in uh, in the uh, in, in the civilian uh, in a civilian environment in the United States. Okay. Because there's always rules of engagement. There's always rules in, in combat. If, if you're in a war zone, you know, uh, if you don't follow the rules, you can end up court-martialed. You can end up, uh, you know, you can end up a war criminal. Uh, same thing in a civilian environment. There's always rules. If you don't follow the rules, you know, you can end up in jail even though you're just defending yourself. So um, what a lot of these military guys do wanted to do is to, in order to build up their resume, uh, they wanted to take my, my uh, gun safety courses, my civilian gun safety courses, um, so they, they can, you know, put on their resume and try to get a job. So I learned a lot from them. I was able to observe them shoot. Um, and usually with the police guys, a lot, a lot of the, the way that usually works is they, uh, they want to bring their families, you know, their kids to shoot. Um, in New York City in particular, um, you know, unless you already have a gun permit, they won't let you shoot a gun over there. Uh, so they have to take them outside of the city. So... Basically, that, that's why they come to me. Um, so, again, I, I, that's why I have access to, you know, lots of different people that shoot guns, that carry guns, that, that work in that type of uh, environment. And I'm able to see how they shoot. Now, there's a, uh, a big difference between the guys that did special ops work and the guys that just did, uh, you know, that were just like standard uh, infantry, okay? One of the things that I have observed with standard infantry... And this is not always, but, you know, this is not always the case, but a lot of them, when they shoot, they close one eye. So they'll come up, they'll close one eye. So here's the thing. When you're shooting, you want to keep both eyes open. It gives you peripheral vision, gives you depth perception. It's not a natural thing to close your eye if, 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 you're, if, if somebody's trying to kill you, right? Because so if, if there's a threat out there, if you're scared, you know, you're going to be like an owl. You want to see as much as possible. So th there's, a, there's a problem with shooting with... with uh, uh, with one eye closed, and yet a lot. I, I've seen a lot of guys that came back from war zones, um, and, and just because they were like just sort of like standard infantry, um, they shot with one eye closed. Um, and the reason is because you know, you know, at, at in, in the standard military services, you basically have to pass a qualification. Once you pass that, then you just move on. You move on to the next level. Um, they're not interested in making you the best marksman that you can possibly be. They just want to know that you can hit the target at this level, and then they go on to training you in other things. Uh, you know, a lot of it involves movement. You know, um, you know, working different types of other equipment. You know, communications. Um, you know, so so they don't focus so much on the individual uh, skill, the individual skill with the guns. Okay, uh, whereas with the special ops guys. Um, and, and guys that just did like specialized uh, type of stuff, I saw that there was a much more of an emphasis in the actual use of the gun. Um, those guys were a lot more conservative, just coming up fast, you know, coming, you know, getting on or from this position here, you know, snapping out fast and getting on target. Uh, so that was a big concern of those of theirs. That was also a um, uh, that's also a big concern of the um, the guys that do competition shooting. So there's a lot of similarity that I have seen between the special ops guys. And the competition shooters. Um, in fact, I've I've seen interviews of special ops guys that did competition shooting, like three gun and stuff like that, because they wanted to be better at their job. So they used competition shooting to improve their their shooting skills because it's a way basically to benchmark themselves uh, and, and and improve upon. So um, so in our society today, let me put this down. Um, as far as people that, that that use guns, carry guns. Um, the competition shooters are by far the the best shooters. Okay, uh, the, you know. So even though it's sport, 
even you know just because th they're practicing a specific skill for a specific day a specific hour they're really able to focus on that you know you know they're focusing on being able to use that gun in a very specific way they're usually the best at it right and then the, i've seen um a lot of the uh the special ops guys who also do competition shooting or after they came out they went into competition shooting um you know so there's a, they see a lot of similarity okay so this isn't stuff you know this this is basically what they're telling me um so and then and then you have the guys that that are like standard military you know basically they just passed their certifications um and then that's it they just moved on they weren't you know the military rules was not really interested in developing their shooting skills beyond what was um uh, minimally required okay um you know they were more interested in gain the right position you know they were, one of the things that they practiced a lot was getting to the ground really fast okay um the uh you know so that's one of the things that that, that came up with the military you got you basically you know the, the the ground is your friend you know um so that was a big concern of this getting to the ground as 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 quickly as possible laying as flat as possible um that that's interesting with the uh with the with the police officers the, like the mo the ones that i have mostly had uh um involvement with again like i said mostly from new york city um you know most of their training is in writing tickets okay you know that's the thing that makes money over there um that police department over there is basically a, a, a taxing agency you know it's a revenue creation agency it's, it's, it's a revenue agency for the city basically so most of their training revolves around you know writing tickets making the type of arrests that generate revenue um that's their focus it's not shooting they don't they don't there's no money in shooting people so that's not what they what they practice uh, i over the, i did um run into a couple of contractors back in the uh uh in um back in what was it, 2000 2009 2010 you know a couple of contractors um that worked for a couple of those comp companies i think this guy was from triple canopy uh similar to blackwater if you guys ever heard of blackwater um but this this guy was from triple canopy um and uh, you know again they're more interested in individual um um you know in individual skill with the gun being able to shoot well at different distances at different ranges you know always shooting with both eyes open you know shooting a lot of unconventional positions you know being able to um shoot from inside a car right so uh one of the things that you know in close quarters right if let's say you're inside a car you know so the gun's over here you know between your legs or to the side you know you got to be able to bring the gun up shift it to one side be, being a actually able to shoot like this from inside the car then being able to you know go down switch hands come to the other side and shoot the gun to the other side from inside the car um same thing with the pistol if you imagine yourself sitting in a pistol you come out you know if you come if, if i had the gun on my right side yeah i mean i can go all the way around to here but it's kind of you know usually when people think about shooting to the right side they'll usually go one-handed uh but most of the special ops guys that I ran into they'll just switch to the left hand because now you can just go all the way around so they're perfectly comfortable shooting left-handed or right-handed all right so again this is an advanced skill um that you will not typically see with uh most people that that carry guns okay so um so i i think that you know going back to the original thing i was talking about of the people the average person that carries a gun today right um you know where like on a scale of one to ten where is their actual skill level uh on average most people usually come in at a, like a two or three okay and again that's averaging um uh, a lot of people that are um down at the one all right who just know like minimal target shooting and minimal gun safety so that's averaging a lot of people down at one with a few people that are up in the seven eight nine okay so uh because of that it kind of the average does come up a little bit to like the threes and the fours maybe uh but uh that, you know that's where it is today you know that's my observation as a full-time firearms instructor um and a, a a chief range safety officer okay um so uh i hope uh, you guys enjoyed this video um if you're not a member of the channel please subscribe i'll talk to you guys soon